Cruz with Gina, Gina. The News with Gina Grad. Well, two murder suspects who escaped from a California prison on Sunday, they've been recaptured. Uh, and it's a little bit of its own little uh, friendly uh, friendly escape story. 20-year-old. Oh, project, man. Yep. 20-year-old. They're going to want this option. 20-year-old <laughs> Jonathan Salazar and 21-year-old Santos Fonseca escaped from jail in Salinas, California, by climbing through a hole they made in the ceiling of a bathroom and crawling through a wall. The men, who belong to rival gangs... Set aside their differences Aww. and do this together. Both suspected in a separate murder case. It's a feel-good story. It really is. You they put what? aside all the differences in the rival gangs. Well, you know, they have more in common, really, than they, than yeah, they, than they think. Don't. You know, they, they both would like to get some pussy before they hit the dead chair. But let me say this. I, have this. I think we all have the same thing. Like, when you hear about murders escaping from prison... You go, oh, that's bad. But it's really <laughs> predicated on how they got out of prison. Like if they go, like, he just punched a guard and ran out the front gate. I go, eh. but they go, over the course of years, yeah. he made a life-size dummy of himself <laughs> in a death mask. And then they tunneled out. You go, impressive. Yeah, that's good, yeah. I think right. I could hang with this guy. Still yeah. murder running amongst us, but it's how Very they got impressive. out. I yeah. weigh my judgment on how they do the bed sheets and the six story yeah. and the rope the and going over the edge. So you like these guys because they made a hole uh, and, uh, in the ceiling and crawled through. Yeah, that's so, not bad. Okay. You like that's that. Not bad at all. Deep respect for yes. both these gentlemen. <laughs> they, say they spent three days on the run, eventually managed to cross into Mexico, but they were captured when they tried to cross back into the U.S. They've been returned to the prison uh, where they came from and are being housed in different units. Got to separate those two. Uh, meanwhile, authorities are curious as to why two rival gang members stayed together the whole time, also, never it's gotta, went their separate ways. It's got to be bitch. Like It's, it's kind of like getting a scar. You know what I mean? Like, like you know when you got a, a guy's got a good scar mm. and... Uh, you go, ooh, how'd you get that scar? And you wish it was in a bar fight sure. or you were protecting an elderly woman mm-hmm. who's being picked on by uh, some Antifa idiot. guy or something. <laughs> but it's like, oh, that is a, a butt plug came out. <laughs> I was low, I was on Amel Poppers. I fell <laughs> off the bed and I cut myself pretty good. A partner was fine. And you're like, uh, you wish it was something good. Yeah. And I'm just saying, like, when escape prisoners are sitting around and there's like, how'd you get out? Tunneled out. That's right. All right. It took me, it t- it nope. took me 14 years to dig that. And then the guy's <laughs> the bed sheets off the roof. And then there's the poor guy who was the administrative problem. But they just got the complete yeah. computer yeah. It's like they let the wrong guy out. The papers. I had 21 years left, but they told me on Tuesday I could leave, so I just left. Like it's embarrassing. They're yeah. all out, but it's still it's not yeah. a, degrees. It just, depends on the story. Not a lot of glory there. No, you're right. Mm-hmm. Um, I have some big news for you, Adam Carolla. I don't know if it's good news. I don't know if it's bad news, but I do know that it's big news. Hmm. Uh, with so many reboots taking shape right now, a female-led reboot of the 1970s series that starred David Carradine is now in development Kung at the Fu. CW. The original Kung Fu did star Carradine as, Shaolong, uh, as a Shaolin monk who traveled through American Old West armed only with his spiritual training and his martial arts skills as he sought out his half-brother Danny. Uh, this new take follows a young Chinese-American woman who drops out of college and goes on a life-changing journey to an isolated monastery in China. But when she returns to find her hometown overrun with crime and corruption, she uses her martial arts skills and Shaolin values to protect her community and bring the criminals to justice, all while searching for the assassin who killed her mentor and is now targeting her. See, Kim, this is on brand, not like your <laughs> fantasy island. We're taking a dark I, turn. I was, Take I a was page. in Kung Fu. <gasps> with David Carradine. You were? I was. No. You must have been a kid. It, no, no. It was like when they came back and did it the second time oh, they in did Toronto, second one. like in the mid-90s, they came up to Toronto and it was just like the biggest hit ever. And David, they called me up and they said, lead guest star, it's a cop. Um, you got a son who wants to take karate and he's being beat, whatever. And so I, I read him. Okay, sure. Four days of film with David Carradine. He walks up to me and he sort of recognized me and I certainly recognized him. He said, come on in my trailer. Come on in. So we go into his trailer, big trailer. Mine was a smaller trailer. <laughs> and we walk in and they would sit down, sit down, sit down. He takes his shirt off. You know, he's got bare feet. He rehearsed in bare feet, walked across the cement in bare feet. I thought that's really cool and weird. Mm-hmm. And then he says, do you want something to drink? And I said, sure, what do you got? 
And he goes, right here. And there was a vat, a, a glass big vat uh, of something. And he had a little pouring thing that he unplugged and he poured himself a drink. And then I looked and there was something moving in the in, in the drink. In the drink. <laughs> in, the, in, the in, the, in the vat. And it was a snake. And I, I, I just, I just went. Of course, I'll have some of that. I never drank it, but it would change, you know. And it was just like David Carradine, and he couldn't stop talking, and he was so uh, a legend of a weirdo. Just You're like, telling me wow. there was a live snake inside the? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't know what. Well, that... you guys got a couple of top-notch uh, drink stories with <laughs> wow. legendary celebrities. That's yeah, great. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I don't yeah. want to be a one-upper, but one time Dustin Diamond offered me a granola bar. So did, you, did, you accept, did you accept well, it? I think you just did. You, 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 you did one up. You did no, one up. Don't say no. <laughs> don't say you don't want it to. It was the Nature <laughs> Valley. I don't want to drop names. <laughs> the peanut butter kind. <laughs> who? All right. I will ask you guys. Who gets their ass ripped up faster? Who gets their ass either kicked or killed faster in a TV series? The new crew member on a Star Trek episode. <laughs> the guy, you've seen 86 episodes, you never saw this yeah. guy before. How, how long before that guy's gone? They have like a name for that, like blue shirts or something like that? Like, like the, the new guy, guy shows up the new random, face yeah. on Star Trek Got or, man. who gets, uh, I'll give you a choice. The first townie at the saloon that calls Carradine Chinaman. <laughs> who gets their ass kicked faster? I'll give you some time to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 option I think, A. I had B. I had Jimmy, Jimmy was making fun of me. He's like, oh, you're always getting in trouble with the Asians. I said, <laughs> I grew up watching Kung Fu. That, every time he walked into a town, I was like, hey, Chinaman, you don't belong here. That's what That's what I grew up on. Yeah. I, I get grandfathered in. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you are. I should You're be grandfathered in. Yeah. My memory was jogged when you mentioned Go, because I own that movie on DVD. I love that movie. I saw it in the theater. And you had a great subplot with, if my memory serves, friend of the show, Jay Moore? Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, Scott Wolf. That's right. But your scene was with with Jay, right? The awkward scene that I I won't spoil. But John August, great writer. Doug Lyman, great director. That That was a great movie. It was not an awkward scene. No, bro, you can, <laughs> bro, you can spoil all you want. That movie was shot in 1954. <laughs> the people haven't seen it by now. That's a really I mean, good point. Spoil all we you have want. The, we have Kim's Kung Fu scene. Yes. Oh, that's just going to be so Oh, my God. Oh my Look God. at you. You didn't tell me you were 12. <laughs> I told you it was young. <laughs> oh, that's so... <laughs> no, come Parody. on. Stare down. Stare down. Stare down. You're fighting. You need a drink. Oh, I swear if I had a still of this, I'll hang it in my office. <laughs> You're to fight you to drink. Sit. Nice dialogue. We carried it. You didn't see her, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> Don't know why I take it out on her. I mean. Oh, it's a wife beater. <laughs> oh, man. Come you on. didn't tell us that. I forgot. <laughs> you made so it about a kid. <laughs> no, I got a son. You see in her all that you have lost in yourself. <laughs> It'll become this thing that I hate the most. You know, I had a conversation like this with you about a year ago. <laughs> I think Do you remember we had a nice stop. nap a cab and I was like, Kim, talk to me. <laughs> I'm trying to think when I with stopped beating voice. my wife. I think my son was five. I think five. I just going into kindergarten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's we we changed that's schools. That's when I stopped. Yeah. I, think it was yeah, I remember the while. bus showed up when the police did. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Now yeah. I got it. Yeah, now I got it. Yeah. How do you guys do that? Magic. He's a magic no, man back then. No, how do you do oh, that? So good. Internet magic. Did he end up sending you did he a kick? bottle of whiskey, son? <laughs> did, he, was... did he hit you at the end? Did he kick no, you in your ass? No, no. He made me repent. That's good. Yeah. yeah. I learned something That's about great. myself as a cop. <laughs> <laughs> So we talked the other day that uh, Olivia Newton-John's very famous pants mm. were going on oh, yeah. sale, going that. up for auction. Hundred and some thousand. Well, everybody guessed. Wasn't um, it some absurd amount that, we, that was a proposed? I will, I will reveal. Was it the entire ensemble or just it the pants? It was the... <laughs> I want to know. Well, for well, the big deal was that it was the pants that she was <laughs> yeah. sewed into, right? So right, what yeah, else it, came with it? Yeah, it was the original. When we first reported, it was the entire ensemble. But then when the auction happened, it turns out you could bid on them separately. But uh-huh. the person 
yes. still bought both of them. Mm-hmm. So we we did a little whip around in the studio, and everyone was guessing what it was going to go for. Um, Adam said 125k. Brian said 55k. Phil Lamar said 1.2 million. Big fan. <laughs> and um, I had reported that it was going to go between 100 and 200 thousand. Get the fuck out of here. So first of all, who bought it? Of course, it couldn't be anyone else. It is the founder of the shapewear band Spanx, Sarah Bla- mm. Blakely, who, I mean, literally, uh, <laughs> she had to be sewn into these pants. Is for, she going to um, do the thing that they did with, J- with uh, Barry Bonds' home run ball, blow it up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right? So the pants, along with the leather jacket uh, that Newton wore in the film uh, during the finale, were auctioned off Saturday. So two prices, 162500 and 243200 respectively, bringing the total wow. for both pieces to $405,700. Wow. The items were among hundreds up for bid from the personal collection of Newton John. She's 71 now. She's selling the pieces in an effort to raise money for a cancer wellness and research center in Australia. Ugh. So she brought almost a half a million bucks. Just wow. like that. Yeah, just Speaking like that. It was a perfect storm. Wasn't her husband the guy like faked his death yes. at sea? Yes. Do you guys remember that story? It was like, kind of crazy. Boat outside of Mexico, and they're like, he <laughs> fell over the edge. She right. must have been a real pill. <laughs> well, and there was an, uh, I believe there was a, a young lady waiting for him on the other side. Uh. Wasn't that the. There was just story. a crazy story where and he went. She, was she unaware of it? This is like yeah. a sleeping. She, she died. thought he died. Yeah. It's like a sleeping at the enemy situation. Yeah, this yeah. was a few years ago. Ooh, All right. Maybe. And I know, I know the reference right there. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's do one more, Gina Grant. You got it. Well, Pat Benatar was the leading contender for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame fan, bo- fan vote, but she has been overtaken by somebody else. Oh, really? I feel like she could rock those black tight Spanish oh, pants. Oh, yeah. like Anyone could she did. back in the day, That's right? right. So she was number one, but Dave Matthews has overtaken her. Rabbit Matthews bandits. now leads by 15,000 votes, putting Pat in second place, Doobie Brothers in third, Soundgarden in fourth, Judas Priest in fifth. Voting at rockhall.com is open until January 10th. Wow. And uh, the 2020 induction ceremony will take place May 2nd in Cleveland. What's everyone's favorite Pat Benatar song? Mm. Hit me well, with your best. Yeah, not to be uh, too easy. Yeah, too yes, I know. I do love Hell is for Children. Hell is for Children. Yeah, that's pretty great. Not to be too ask. Don't that's use a, sex with weapons. That's a great song. <laughs> it, it's great because it's so earnest and it takes itself so seriously. And if you listen to the lyrics, it's it's nuts. But also, how old is she now? Kicks into overdrive. Like, uh, I, I don't know. Do I'll, I'll give her. Um, I'll give her right at Olivia Newton John yeah, age, yeah. like seventy one. I don't know Late how 60. Brian, question for you. Yes, let's hear it. We belong to the night. Tool tune? I love that song. A, is it, you know what? It fits the definition because it is a great song. Yeah. You guys a fan? We belong to the night? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love that song. On on yes. A tool tune means you enjoy it, Great but song. if you're at a stoplight, you roll your window up. <laughs> somebody in a convertible Miata pulls up next to you, you got to roll that window up. It's a good song. You just don't want people to know you're listening yeah, to it. If right. it's a bad song, it's a guilty pleasure. I think this is a good song. Yeah. Mm. I only roll my window up when my Petula Clark hits it. Oh, downtown? I, all of it. I have the anthology. I love her. <laughs> now I feel bad because you, you, you uh, Pat benatar me with... P- Patula Clark. I only have downtown as my... What don't is, sleep in the subway. Oh, sign of the oh, times. Don't sleep in the subway is an awesome... Color my world. That's fine. Don't sleep in the subway. <laughs> I haven't heard this song in a million years. It's it's melodic. I think it's she has sweet. It's like beautiful. One of the most romantic voices ever. Yes, yeah, she does. Ever. She does. And, and don't sleep in the subway. We've never brought that up on this show. <laughs> and it's arranged very well, too. You know this one? No, I've never heard it. It'll kick in. I think you might. I don't know. I don't know it yet. You might know it. Oh man, I just dated myself. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Old's Pat Benatar, Jeez. Chris. It shifts. She's sixty-six. Sixty-six. You called it. But you know, this, her arrangements were great. Mm. If you listen to. Are you going to sing with me, Bill? Ready? <laughs> Don't sleep in the subway, darling. Don't 
don't stand in the pouring rain. It's so good. This is so good. It's like vanilla ice cream. So good. Cherry on top. Caramel. Forget your fudge. Nice. Right. Me again. My windows are going up, not even the car. Oh, no, mine are coming right down. I'm sharing that singing. <laughs> Haven't heard a song in 40 years. Wow. <laughs> I heard it last week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, never, no one's heard that no, one, huh? I, I like it. No, it wasn't. <laughs> it's good. I'm getting this. All right. This could be your next karaoke song. See, see what I did? <laughs> Created a monster. Yes. All right. Craft work, third to last in votes. Thank <laughs> Christ for that. All right. Um, yeah, they, it, it's like craft work. They influenced so many bands to play different music. That's what, that's what they did. Like, I'm not going to sound like those assholes. <laughs> Thank was, you for the influence, craft, craft work. They're influencing bands. What it's like when you pass song? a homeless guy with your son. You go, don't end up like that. That's what craft work did. That's how they influenced the Foo Fighters. So we're going to end up like those dicks. <laughs> Thank you for the inspiration, craft work. We now know what not to do on stage. <laughs> Idiots. Of Pat Benatar. Hits well, one of the less celebrated ones. We're running with oh, yeah. the it's a great song. I know. Yeah, this got heavy rotation on the sound when I worked there. I'd go see her. Oh. Yeah. Totally. Uh, God willing, at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Her and uh, Petula Clark together. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go. Oh, we'll go. I'll, I'll go. Yeah, I'll sweet. drive. <laughs> Windows <laughs> down. No, I'll drive you both. <laughs> I'll drop you off. <laughs> All right. Let me just hit Castrol Edge. Did you bring it home, Gina Grad? I'll do it right now. I'm Gina Grad, and that's the news. Yeah, wasn't ready for that. Gina. Right. <laughs> that was the news.